Hi. Hey. Hello. How are you doing? Hope you're having a good day. My name is Sunny, and I love movies. You probably like movies too because you clicked on the video, but to be honest, this video is more than just the average YouTube movie essay or a critique. It's your love letter to filmmaking. You see, I was an average moviegoer. I grew up with films I had seen on cable television or joyfully experienced at the local cinema, but I don't know where my fascination with filmmaking originated. But all I knew was that I had a burning passion and respect for it. Thing is, the only kinds of movies I endorsed were the annually animated blockbusters to the dawn of comic book superhero adaptations, but I've never truly watched cinema. What do I mean by never watching cinema? Well, to catch up to speed, this simple thought motioning around the back of my head is what has brought me and you, the viewer, to this video today. You see, I'd always dreamed of being more than just the viewer, rather the individual that causes a movie to be on the screen, to make movies, to be a filmmaker. I'd always planned this out by uploading my own goofy stylized critiques like the internet legends I grew up with, such as the Nostalgia Critic or Angry Video Game Nerd. You know the ones. It wasn't until one special day in 2020 when thinking about finally launching my own channel that I asked myself, who am I to be a critic if I've never watched the classics again, cinema? This question led to my experiment, the one I entitle Best of the Best, in which I simply ran onto Google and searched best movies of all time, jotting down every single damn result that popped up, creating a list off my notes app and telling myself to watch every single one, as well as jot down my personal opinion on each one. And so I did, and this video is that experiment. I didn't originally see this fun little project as the video to launch my channel, but as I came to it, I decided it'd be a great way to introduce myself to the world of the internet and establish myself not just as a critic, but a lover for the filmmaking form. It may not be the most ethical introduction, but it's one nonetheless. The only goal is to try to understand what makes movies so special to me and maybe understand my passion along the way. Now that we're caught up, how's the rest of the video going to go? Well, I'm going to establish the rules I provided myself and apply them to you to get an understanding of how I went about with this and then we'll go through each movie I had the pleasure of viewing and all in all, I hope you enjoy my ramble. I must watch every film that was provided from Google, except for releases from 2020 and beyond, since they're too relevant to be considered classics in my opinion. It can be a film of any kind, from live action and animation, or of genre and region, but must be considered feature length or released in theaters, so nor short films. If one of the results is a part of a series or franchise, I would have to watch that series' original work, and if I wanted to endorse it, watch the rest of it, but only five installments is the limit, and it must be mainline features, so no spin-offs, prequels, reboots, etc. Even if an installment in the series has a negative reception, I must watch it regardless. For movies I had watched previously, I have to rewatch through a blind lens to provide a proper critique without a prior opinion beforehand. I must watch the original theatrical cut of the film, but if not available, watch the most common version, no extended, directorial, or any other kind of version of the film, just the common or original version. The limit is 70 movies because if I ended up watching like 2000 films, I would never get this video done. But with all that being said, here we go. Gone with the Wind. The first film to kick off this list, Gone with the Wind is something I really admire because this film literally broke me by the end of it all. The production is downright outstanding. Every little thing is blooming with spectacle and one thing I noticed is that over the course of the film, things tend to get less crowded and it's a nice little detail. 
the color palette and overall camera work are truly immersive and enchanting. Never once got bored throughout his three hour runtime and the music perfectly arranges from striking violence, blissful joy and somber tones to elevate scenes. I think what makes this film special to me is that it's not really about the civil war, it's about Scarlett O'Hara's struggles with herself and the people around her, which is so complex and truly emotionally devastating. By the end of it all, that will make this a film I won't ever, ever forget. Citizen Kane This movie had a lot of high expectations for me due to its sheer amounts of high praise in pop culture and I'll tell you, I was not disappointed in the slightest. When the movie first began, I was starting to suspect that I was about to endure a drama about this arrogant and corrupted man playing with the system for his own lustful power, but what I got out of it instead is a very emotional and somber life story which makes me love the film even more, and is still timeless for despite its black and white palette and the clear 40s production, I can still see this as a film from any era. The thing that I think really makes this film such a crown staple is how it truly makes you question its more hidden meanings across the well-constructed story and it leaves you feeling a sense of emptiness yet satisfaction even more, at least for me, and how I totally understand this film's stance in cinematic history. Rear Window I've never watched an Alfred Hitchcock film before. I've watched Psycho's first 30 minutes or so, but that was about it. I totally understand why this guy was such a legend because this movie is great. I love how simplistic yet astounding the courtyard setting is via the production and how every apartment we witness across the film is brewing with life. The camera is always set in being from Jeff's apartment and helps really engage me even more to the mystery presented. The style keeps the film to remain fun. I love the direction of how the film chooses to focus upon two sides of a romance and a mystery that are both great. I love the characters and the actors excellently play them and I just love the story, especially at the third act for it's riveting from start to finish and truly left me on the edge of my seat. 12 Angry Men This movie kills. I was engrossed in it all the way through and I didn't want it to end. It's set up right from the get-go already had me hooked in and it did not for a single second waste its time elaborating and completing every single goal it set out to do. And this makes it for a movie that truly can create a very thoughtful discussion. Like the script and dialogue, as well as the incredible cast, truly make this film great because the case that the characters discuss truly pinpoint accurate and realistic arguments that anybody would have when being involved in this jury and it is just downright incredible. Even for its time, this film is still very timeless and the one room setting again is truly marked well by the production and the camera always panning around but also distinctly framing upon each character's interaction within the debate and this is a film anyone can enjoy and witness its mastery. A Fistful of Dollars I've never properly forayed into the western genre, but I gotta say, I'm glad I took this long for this and its sequel to be my gateway drug. The story is very simple and the only thing about this film that I consider a minor flaw is how the innocent characters and rivalry gangs aren't that fleshed out, but they don't detract the story for me since its simple roots are still compelling and enjoyable. I love the clear cut framing, blocking, and close up shots, the heroically spunk and rebellious attitude that come from its original style, the dialogue spark, and its memorable music mixing from action excitement to serious intimidation. I think what truly makes me appreciate this piece is that of Clint Eastwood, who I never actually watched his work and man I understand his legendary status because his performance and character is truly heroic and likable. For a few dollars more. Now this one truly improves a lot as a sequel and I love this one more than Fistful. First off, the story is greatly improved for it leaves no filler and better development. I love the addition of Carolina as he truly heightens the film's quality by adding so much more variety. 
I love the approach to a more bounty hunter-esque plot, which is more exciting and original. Even things that were already perfect get approved upon, with the music, shots, dialogue, and a more criminal overlay to the tone and style. A tiny nitpick is that it could have been shorter, but still, this is a great watch, and I highly enjoy it. I cannot wait to check out the good, the bad, and the ugly someday. 2001 A Space Odyssey I'm a rare case where I love this movie on my first time viewing, fully because I recognize great art, and I was truly blown away by 2001. The production work that went into this film is incredible and ageless. I love the space bending imagery, the music's ability to progress the film along, the editing allowing every scene to breathe and truly let out its display. The film truly sparked towards the end as across the runtime, I was still highly induced into the simple beginning to the very dire and dreadful middle, only for everything to truly mess with my head at those last haunting minutes that even I didn't understand what I was watching, but I can tell, like any great art, was something for me to go deep in and look upon for its hidden symbolism. The Godfather now the entire movie community puts this and its sequel as the greatest movies of all time. So these being on the list spelled expectations for me and they exceeded them effortlessly. The filmmaking is on another level. Literally every single second can be held up as a painting in an art museum. From the color palette, framing, and angles make it a true work of art to witness. The real draw of the movie come not from its mafia based angle, though the story is very engaging, but its central focus on a thematic level portraying the parallels between a father and son, who just so happened to be in the mafia, and how it's such a dark reflection of the idea of family, at least in my opinion, and how despite its runtime, feeling like 5 hours, I was engaged all the way through from start to finish, and it truly leaves a lot to be analyzed. The Godfather Part 2 Now we got the sequel, Part 2, which I must agree with the popular opinion is indeed another classic, very much on the same level as the first, in my opinion a little better, because it does in which what all great sequels do, and doing the opposite of the first. If the original focused on Michael Corleone's rise to power and Vito's downfall, then it does the reverse in spectacular fashion, showcasing how these individuals project their power not just on others, but themselves. Plus, the new task of having to replicate 20th century New York in flashbacks perfectly emulates realism, and again, the iconic filmmaking style as always remains perfection. Jaws this movie is held high as being the first true blockbuster and with it being that it is a great blockbuster but has a lot more to it, to me is what makes it a classic. The very documentary approach to its shark setup helps really build intensity when it comes to the overall thrilling tone of the movie and is handled very well. Even when it goes full on shark mode, it's still great and it never comes off as fake to me. It chooses not to just focus entirely on the white shark, but also on the humans facing it, adding so much more depth to them and really making us care about them and their lives being at stake, which makes it a true classic in every sense of the word. One Flew Over the Cuckoo's Nest This movie really hit me right in the feels in both a joyful and somber way. Its approach to accurately examine mental health in a psychiatric setting is really endearing and important, not portraying every character as a freak or a weirdo, but real human beings who have real issues and are no different from you or I, with each performance, particularly Jack Nicholson, elevating the movie to a highly entertaining level. I think this movie needs to be watched upon the mainstream to really spotlight the important attention that mental health requires, but even without that, it's still a film with a lot of emotion put into it, though that ending is very heart-punching. Taxi Driver This movie absorbed me from start to finish. I cannot get enough of this film, which is why this is one of my personal favorites. 
I have to really appreciate its non-linear story because it makes it stand out a lot more and it still remains highly engaging with its many scenarios and how Travis Bickle approaches them, which again, his character is one of the most fascinating personalities in all of films for me because he's such a somber and tortured individual that leaves a somewhat sense of relatability due to his position who wouldn't work without De Niro's incredible performance. I think the real draw for this film for me personally is its visuals. Its neon 70s New York nighttime atmosphere is my kind of jam and I can watch this film on mute and still have a blast in getting enthralled with the filmmaking at hand. Rocky As a kid, I've always known of the character of Rocky Balboa but never really watched his movies until now and I gotta say. I understand the hype. I wasn't expecting this to be a bad film, but just a standard sports flick and I could never be more wrong. This movie is so full of heart, passion, and love put into it. I love its very down to earth direction and how it utilizes the boxing scene as a backdrop to help flesh out what's most important, its characters. I fell in love with Rocky Balboa, its world, and the people in it. You can tell Sylvester Stallone put a lot of himself into this movie and I commend him more for it because this is a certified classic, no questions asked. Star Wars Now, I'm a casual Star Wars fan beforehand and going into a more critical lens for these films was interesting, but this one is still a fun adventure. I love the very creative and ageless universe this film established from the most upfront appearances of its different aliens and the practical work going into the tiniest details in the background really keep the movie feeling alive. The music goes super hard with its very bombastic score and the editing is very tight and always switching from story angles to see how every character is progressing throughout the narrative, which that plot too, though simple, does a good job of being blockbuster fun. The cast of characters, both heroes and villains, are still likable as all and you can't help but appreciate every single performance that went into bringing these icons to life for the first time. Mad Max This is another franchise I had no prior contribution to but again, I can really understand the appeal. The first of the original Mad Max features is far from perfection but I can't help but get really into its layers of engagement. It may have flaws all across the board, but what the movie is really trying to go for in its highly enchanting, adrenaline rushing, fast paced, molecular action sequences make it all worth it because for its surprising low budget, they really pull off every single action moment just right to a point where it makes this movie still a fun watch, even on rewatch, and helps really create the overall identity of this series. Alien. There are not too many horror movies on here, disappointing to me, which to clarify, I am a big horror fan, but man if there is anything new for me to have experienced for this experiment, I'm glad it was this one. It takes a very creative blend of science fiction and horror to unfold the very scary situation of these space travelers having to survive against a harmful life form that is really frightening and truly horrific. The production value for this movie is another level because for a film released in 1979, this is still mind boggling to me how real its science fiction design looks to a point where it remains timeless and never outdated. I just really appreciate how creative and simple it is making it more iconic. Rocky 2 Now I've endured many, many movie series and they all immediately drop off after the original and I wasn't having high expectations to have a good time with this movie, but in my own opinion, I think this is on par with the original. The direction was much more elevated in bringing more life to moments with its groovy music and grounded cinematography, as well as adding more depth and progression to the characters we're all familiar with. But the real highlight to what makes this on par with the original is how it better builds the stakes for its climactic boxing match because not only was Apollo Creed a fantastic villain but me and my cousin were going insane witnessing that fight for the first time. It was truly phenomenal. 
Apocalypse Now. I might get flamed for this, but to me Apocalypse Now is no masterpiece, but I still think it's a great time. The characters are serviceable and their different stances to the situations that come their way is rightfully written. The film craft has a good range of dynamic lighting, blocking, and the production is magnificent. Every war moment truly feels real when effects and environments go off. I think for me personally though, I for sure need to rewatch it as though its more experimental direction towards its themes are appreciated for making it stand above the usual war flick. I think it's not conveyed properly through the actual story itself and how it's put together doesn't remove immersion but like it's very off-putting as like the first half kind of just mopes around until one grim scene occurs and the film starts to find itself only for the third act to unfold and quickly end. It's just for me, I felt a lot of things were missing, but I still certify it as a classic. The Empire Strikes Back Like The Godfather Part 2, this movie is also a great example of how to make a sequel right. The score and style of the original remain intact since they were already perfected, but everything else is given more punch. The cinematography has a more artistic flair to it with its shot composition, dynamic lighting, and color grading to help really emphasize a more cinematic appeal. The direction is also on point with the story being split up into traversal events across the galaxy and again manages to captivate the viewer from beginning to end, but also not being afraid and pushing the characters we've grown familiar with to newer boundaries and contain a more mature palette to everything making this, in my opinion, better than the original in every way. The Shining This movie is insane and true horror at its finest. It has a very simple setup and may start off as a standard horror flick, but as it slowly progresses through its puzzling narrative, I started to lose my own sanity whilst watching it. The craft of display is truly godly at how it's executed, how it manages to not change its hotel locale at all and yet easily transition it from a luxury resort to a dimension in hell through the span of its runtime. Every single frame of this movie is a piece of a puzzle and that's what makes this a cult classic of the genre for its direction to confuse us, the audience, into seeing the answers as to what is going on right in front of our faces and yet never understand what is going on at all. which too is displayed through the characters who are all victims of this haunting place from the innocent Wendy, disturbed Danny, and psychotic Jack. Mad Max 2 A very rare scenario is presented in the sequel for it's not exactly a sequel that is masterful in progressing the original but rather in committing to the potential that its predecessor upheld. It does utilize the strengths of the original Mad Max by going all in with its now fully established post-apocalyptic setting and ramming up the intense and adrenaline rushing follicular action sequences that are what made the original enjoyable both in terms of its production, camera work, and music. A big improvement is over its editing and tone as everything has a cohesive flow and the film manages to perfectly balance a threatening attitude and fun-filled demeanor. Plus, the antagonist and supporting cast have much more personality, but a real standout is in Max as he has a more dynamic feel to him that makes him more interesting as a lead, which is heavily supported by the previous film. Rocky 3 the quality for me began to decline in the Rocky series with this one, but I still think it's an enjoyable watch if nothing groundbreaking. I really appreciate the relationship development between Rocky and Apollo who both really keep the film together and are a joy to watch on screen, even if the other significant characters are pushed to the side. Clubber Lang didn't work as an antagonist for me since I felt he was too non-threatening and never came off as intimidating. Honestly, am into its more over-the-top humble approach to its boxing sequences which again are still fun to watch and it all leaves this as a very fun installment even if it lacks some charm. Return of the Jedi 
I am very optimistic towards this finale in the Star Wars trilogy, but I can't deny its faults. This film is still a very solid watch, but its only real drawbacks are that it tries to mesh the more upbeat fun from the original and the dramatic maturity of Empire, but they both never click and leave the film to be inconsistent. The pacing can also be a drag as the opening goes on for far too long and it never really cuts to the pace with the story. One half of the story is enjoyably fine but doesn't really suit the roots of a climactic finale and kind of underutilizes half the cast. But the other half with the conclusion to Luke's arc is pure perfection for I was into it every step of the way and it's where the movie really shines. The iconic style of Star Wars is still intact from the clever cinematography, incredible score, and creative production keep this maybe not as the perfect finale we could have gotten, but still a satisfying end to a great trilogy. Mad Max Beyond Thunderdome The conclusion to the original era of Mad Max movies I had a good time with this installment, even if it reverts to the quality of the original with its flaws. A lot of this movie's aspects are mixed upon execution, particularly with it trying to appeal to both fans of the series and to younger audiences, which in some areas were great and others not so much. It kind of remained stale with repeating the same story beats and development of Mad Max 2, but its more appraisable elements come from the incredible molecular work once again and having more creativity with its sets and costumes. It is a solid watch and may be very inconsistent, but it's still a fun time, especially for appealing to younger audiences. Rocky 4 Surprisingly, even though this one is still weaker than the previous outing, it remains watchable. It's got a lot of faults, mostly from the poor direction and a lack of clear focus, dragged out pacing, unbalanced editing, but again, it still has its praises as Rocky Balboa and his allies remain likable. A surprisingly dark character death is handled perfectly in building the film's stakes and the writing offers something new. Plus, this one has the best soundtrack out of the entire series, with having a good variety. It's not perfect, but it remains good. Aliens Not a good sequel, but instead a great one is presented in Aliens. Instead of doing the same story or tonal shift from the original, it takes a more action-oriented overlay than the more horror roots of their predecessor. But it is highly done to a T with its large amounts of improvements from an already perfect movie. The supporting characters have much more distinct traits and sympathy. The stakes are higher, the now added multiple aliens antagonism is more horrifying, and the cinematography truly embraces its, its space-based civilized universe to a grander scale. Ellen Ripley becomes a full-blown icon who is an awesome survivor with a now motherly position and elevated by Sigourney Weaver's terrific performance. Alien and this one stand tall together as both staples of their respective genres. The Princess Bride I love this movie and represents a side of me where I'll admit as I've gotten older, I've been obsessed with movies that are dark and grimy and all that jazz but I can't deny there's a huge portion within myself that is a sucker for the more whimsical, fantastical, and joyfully silly movies, and this film replicates that feeling effortlessly. I love how rather than be a standard fairy tale, the direction chooses to take a more homage approach by replicating the feeling of amazement that kids and adults get from being read a fairy tale and embracing its silly antics, but in a way where it's never making fun of it. I love the lively characters, simplistic story, triumphant score, and come-to-life production that really holds this movie as a treasure for me. Goodfellas I never was a true fan of gangster movies since I just never found one growing up that appealed to me aside Scarface, but I never found a way to watch it. 
and with hearing a lot of the cinematic genius of Goodfellas, I was very interested in it, being on the list, and my god, I'm a sucker for this genre. The vibrant filmmaking at hand is truly distinct from the in-tune music setting into its club and classic vibes, colorful visuals and framing, and the very snappy editing never feel jarring. The thing that really makes me appreciate this film though is its direction to how it reenacts the true events it's based upon, not just from the excellent performances elevating the real individuals or the story tackling the mafia, but how in its first half it doesn't deny the appeal and even romanticizes the gangster lifestyle, only for the tone to shift and showcase the real horror and corruption that come from it, making a movie that really knows what it is doing with its subject matter. Rocky Five. This one hurt because for a movie series to have four qualified installments far and not only hit the low is impressive, but man, this movie hit the low! I think what hurts the most is the fact that this film had so much potential in being a proper send off for Rocky Balboa as some emotional scenes are touching and there's a lot of great setups here, but the problem stems from that it executes its ideas in such a generic and bland manner. The filmmaking is bizarre as it makes so many weird choices in every department across the duration and it leaves it feeling uncompleted and doing nothing new at all. The characters feel wasted and repetitive and the story just falls flat. I am glad that I watched it, but it did leave me empty. Hopefully Rocky Balboa is a better send off. The Godfather Part 3 I'm going to be the odd man out of the gate and say this is a good film, but for sure it is not a great one at all. On its own merits, I think this film is watchable as the filmmaking aside the pacing is replicative of the rest of the trilogy and I can easily commend it for those aspects, but as a sequel to The Godfather 1 and 2, it really is nothing even remotely close to those classics. Like Rocky V, there are so many great ideas on paper here, having this serve as an epilogue in its setup of Michael trying to repair his sins, and there are a lot of memorable moments in here that I love, but the cast, aside Pacino, are clearly not invested in the movie, the plot is too weak and goes nowhere, and the pacing this time is a complete drag. I can still watch this movie, but as the ending, it trembles. The Silence of the Lambs Scary doesn't come close to even defining this film. I prefer it be entitled as a psychological thriller than a horror movie, but it's classified that way, so I guess I have to say it's a great horror movie, but I mean for sure it is a great movie. Every moment is very thrilling, even before a specific sequence with a breakout and the climax because beforehand, the dynamic between Lecter and Starling is so fascinating and leaves a lot to be examined. With Jodie Foster's detective questioning and Anthony Hopkins' madman trickery really makes this the main draw of the movie, with the direction at hand also emphasizing it from the focused cinematography on their expressions and the on-time editing really makes this film that is more than just thrilling but contains layers of depth. Alien 3 I don't like being cruel to movies that I don't enjoy, but if you're watching a video about me talking about movies and because of my rules and my honesty, I have to say this is just a bad film. Rocky V had wasted potential, but this one is just redundant. The only real redeeming qualities are still just standard and uncreative. The story repeats the same tropes as the previous films and the one part that should be good, Ellen Ripley, doesn't get any progression at all. Plus the alien being a horrible digital effect rings it down for me. Next movie please! Schindler's List if someone walked up to me and asked what I could consider in an objective sense the greatest movie of all time, this for sure is the movie that is going to pop up in my mind instantly. This movie is the perfect example as to why I love movies and why the medium can be so important not just for entertainment but to just life itself. It utilizes the medium to serve as an appreciation letter to Oscar Schindler who is played incredibly by Liam Neeson 
and the beautifully inspiring story of his position and how he utilized his economic power during the Holocaust, the filmmaking perfectly assembles the events. Every individual from the important figures to even the most minor of characters are greatly performed and the honor that goes into shining light on these events make this a great work of art. Forrest Gump I've been in love with this movie ever since I was like five and I understand this isn't exactly the kind of movie I should have been watching at that age but honestly this movie may have helped in growing my love for film. I love how it's like a mix up of different kinds of films to detail the journey of Forrest Gump from childhood beginnings to a lively ending. Every character is so lovable and filled with flaws and intrigue. The narration is hilarious. The blend and tight knowledge of knowing when to be humorous and serious is great. And Forrest Gump himself, who is greatly played by Tom Hanks, is such a lovable character that you can easily get engaged with and that ending makes me feel so many things to this day, even after having not rewatched the film in years, just showcases the true art of movies. The Shawshank Redemption Now this movie is movie making at its finest. The Shawshank Redemption is my kind of movie. I just said movie like four times in a row. Where do I even begin? The pacing makes me feel like I was imprisoned in Shawshank right alongside the characters and helped my engagement further. Morgan Freeman's narration is very supportive and iconic. The set of the Shawshank itself is like the average person's imagery of prison, only now come to life, and everything else is pure perfection. To get to the main point though, its theme and how the film presents it alongside the main duo protagonists are iconic and really evoke the right emotions. And again, to be honest, I cried hard at the ending in all the best ways. This for sure is one of my favorites. Pulp Fiction Sadly, this is the only Tarantino film on here and the first I've ever seen of his filmography, but I totally am hooked on his style. I love his very random, cocky humor, artistic flair, sharp editing, and organic pacing that goes into this movie. He really helps pay homage to pulp magazines and going wild with it. Everybody is a star, not just in the literal cast, but the characters too being playful, memorable, and funny, going hand in hand with the witty and bantering dialogue. But the real draw is how each individual story presented starts off as a standard crime setup only to pull a 180 and completely go into an unpredictable direction that really makes this bizarre in the best way and a fun motion picture. Alien Resurrection Alien 3 was bland, but this is such a blow. Not to the series, but to me. I don't like being harsh, but I must be honest, this may be one of the worst films I've ever seen in every single department. The production is cheap and uncreative, the editing is choppy, the dialogue is horrendous, the characters and acting is forgettable, the tone is inconsistent and lacks any of the charm of the series, the pacing of this terrible film makes you want to turn off the damn television, the music is bland, the story is repetitive again off the once before, and the direction never chooses if it wants to be serious or over the top, which fails in not being a serious film and not once being charming. The only bearable thing is that the cinematography is standard, even if it is still ugly. The only redeeming thing about this movie is that watching all these classics and for this one to be truly awful makes me see why the quality of the others is so important and why every single movie should give it their all. Even if it's not perfect, it remains at the bare minimum a decent watch or entertaining and this movie is not that at all. Titanic I think this film is in a unique position because as a kid, I used to make fun of it, not because of its historical events, but because that one line towards the end, I know you know what I'm talking about, and the logic of what occurred afterwards, but now finally watching this movie with the full context showcases why understanding a film thematically makes it more than just special, but meaningful and understandable at its goals. 
It tries to shine upon real history and utilize it to unfold a very interesting romance. This is one of those rare films where the main setup being the draw is left for the second half in order for a romantic drama to occur in its first half and that it is actually interesting and really gets me invested into wishing for it to never end only for the actual movie's events to kick in and be thrilling and somber in the end. I really appreciate James Cameron's work on making his films a true spectacle while still retaining a human element to really ground it and this movie perfects that. Saving Private Ryan This film proves to me why war is such a scary thing and how it depicts it in such a horrific manner. Like this is literally a horror film. Everything is super complex from the dire and gray filmmaking helping replicate the audio and visualization of war. Every character having distinct traits that is fleshed out into how everyone responds to the situations presented to them and the story itself being an odd turn of the status quo of a military war, with the direction going with the first half being of the characters reaching towards their goal and detailing the many traits of a war along the way, only for the second half for the goal to be completed and leave for a nice break of character interaction and then concluding in an epic action-packed climax that on a technical level is impressive but on an emotional level is truly disturbing and unforgettable which makes this a very smart and necessary movie. The Matrix I always thought that going off the posters this was a film about spies or something. So when I tell you my mind literally blew up during the shocking reveal in the first act, I'm telling you I was flabbergasted. I know a lot of people like to say this movie is so deep with its philosophical ideas and for me personally I think it's how it's presented and executed that makes it engaging and analytical because for me it's not a deep movie at all but it's a totally okay thing. I love this movie for the direction involved like how it goes all out with the philosophical ideas with a science fiction background and very fun full on 2000s cool action packed adventure feel that makes it so much fun and creative to me. If I had to admit Neo and Keanu Reeves are a character I really enjoy because Though his character arc is simple, towards the end when it's completed, I can't deny I had a huge smile on my face when witnessing it, and therefore perfectly sums up how I feel about this movie. Gladiator I really appreciate this film for how it chooses to execute things because a lot of the setups throughout the story could very well lead to something that would be standard but handled well. But instead it goes a different way to not do what's expected, but rather what's right for the movie itself, which takes me from appreciating it to respecting it. I love its ancient Rome exterior and every area of the sets, costumes, dialogue, and everything else, not just to be in the times with its historical setting, but also in aiding a very hitting story. A large chunk of this film has a very brooding attitude and heavily enticing plot that is straightforward and thrilling, but the smaller chunks are very sweet and personal, coming from every character, except Commodus, who is a great villain, and especially Maximus, who is a hero that has a compelling arc and you root for all the way from start to finish. Spirited Away You may have clearly noticed by now that there haven't been any animated movies so far, and to inform you, this is the only one. I love animation and this was the only result, but I am at least glad out of anything this was the film to fill that position. The animation is on another level. It feels like somebody's imagination is coming to life all over the screen and it's so brooming with life and energy, as well as how creative it is in every area of work. The characters are all memorable and stand out apart from one another from the ordinary quirky protagonists to the expressive larger than life personalities. I love the story and how it lacks a three act structure. It's just a crazy and imaginative sequence of moments all standing out together and containing such a pure, fantastical, youthful charm. The Lord of the Rings, The Fellowship of the Ring. To come out and be honest for like the millionth time, as a kid I never checked out Lord of the Rings because I thought it was lame and nerdy. 
now no longer being a douche and reading the book, yes, I'm crazy, and watching the films, this is like some of the coolest movies ever. As the beginning piece, it does a great job at sucking me into its vast and glorious world of Middle-earth. The very likable characters, dialogue that never feels corny and is always progressing things, the pacing feeling just right and feeling like a true adventure, the production aside the dated CGI feeling very embraceive of its fantasy roots, and the story itself never failing to get me invested in not just this installment, but in the rest of this trilogy. The Lord of the Rings, The Two Towers to now continue the discussion, Two Towers is also a great film. Being the middle act, it never feels like filler. Everything feels necessary and progressing the narrative, and the editing chooses to not shake up the events by focusing on the separate group of characters separately to know when to cut and update one storyline from the other. Both the old and new characters are still likable as all. The production is much more on point with a particular action sequence being one of the greatest battles I've ever had the pleasure of viewing, and the pacing still being tight with a now more mix of slow importance and progressive speed. The Matrix Reloaded Now I understand not everyone loves the Matrix sequels and that is perfectly fine and I understand it, but if I want to be completely honest with myself, I'm in love with Reloaded. I appreciate how the movie knows it can't be on par with the original, so instead it chooses to do its own thing and utilize the material from the predecessor, being more of a mindless popcorn flick. I think I love this movie because it's literally the perfect blockbuster. The story is simple and though its metaphors are basically removed, it goes all in with the heightened visuals, creative action, techno music, and even though I can admit the animation work is outdated, an odd part of me goes with it due to the basics of this universe. It actually doesn't take me out of the movie at all. I just had a fun time and since I viewed the first film as a fun film with creative ideas, that's all I could really ask for, though the first is better. The Matrix Revolutions Now this is the one where I understood the discourse with the sequels, but to be honest, I still had a fun time, though this one is for certain far from a masterpiece. The style is still intact and takes some creative liberties with a more war-based score, the digital animation looking good this time, deciding to take place in the more grounded side of the films and going all in with a refreshing and well-handled production. I also think the story and character arcs are well handled, since I still feel a sense of satisfaction with the ending, but its drawbacks are present. The direction itself is what ruins the film, for I feel its focus on the three storylines presented are all wrong, as one is dragged out, one is unnecessary, and the other doesn't get enough attention, which is reflected upon in the pace and editing. I still see this as an enjoyable flick and good enough ending, though the disappointment comes from the fact that this isn't the best version of this movie we could have gotten. The Lord of the Rings, The Return of the King If we've been showcased how to do a sequel right, this is the example of how to do a finale right. This film is utter perfection. Every single frame never feels out of place. The production is literally pushed to the maximum limit. If the other movies were marvelous, this movie is extravagant. The pacing is slower, but it never gets dull and always in service of the context, which the story is downright incredible and truly let me and all the fans leave this universe in satisfying fashion. Every character arc that is completed truly hits the right chords and perfectly represents the themes running throughout the trilogy, and the whole film is a series of iconic cinematic moments that are unforgettable. I say it is not just for this movie, but the entire trilogy as a true staple of not just fantasy, but perfect trilogies. Eternal Sunshine of the Spotless Mind This film is the 
perfect emotional support and I truly mean that in every word. The way the film perfectly emulates its memory-based visuals via the story is creative and though the budget is clearly cheap, they greatly utilize what they have to an advantage and manage to pull it off seamlessly. The music is there when it needs to be. It always cuts back and forth between its two storylines with the right timing and the very ticking clock pace really adds engagement. The two leads, Jim Carrey and Kate Winslet, truly got me to become engaged with this couple and feel their struggle, and its setup is truly put to the maximum of its creative potential. I love this film because it's genuine and honest and truly works on an emotional level. Batman Begins I've always been a diehard fan of superheroes, but for Batman, it was mostly casual. Watching this movie changed that for me though. The thoughtful score from Hans Zimmer is great at giving an intimidating and heroic presence in every moment. The camera work is clever in fully realizing not just action sequences, but the grounded informative and character-based interactions. A lot of care went into the production value as Gotham City truly comes to life with every set, costume, prop, and effect never feeling out of place. The thing that truly makes this movie truly special is how it approaches the Batman origin, not by establishing who the character is, but by showcasing the distinction of him from the average superhero being displayed through the incredible cast, well-written dialogue, and thought-provoking story at hand. Brokeback Mountain Honesty is something I really value in a film, and this is that movie to embody that idea. I love how the music is so powerful that it can literally fill in the shoes of dialogue when there isn't any present on screen. It has a seamless duration as we truly witness the characters evolve from 1963 to 1983, and the very blissed visuals make it more detailed. The story is very complex as, rather than be a standard western romance flick, it chooses to really analyze the problematic boundaries that the two leads find themselves in, and how it not only affects the people closest to them, but themselves in questioning their true feelings and position. Heath Ledger and Jake Gyllenhaal knocked it out of the park with their performances. I truly felt like I was watching real human beings displayed on my screen. Pan's Labyrinth As I stated before, I love my dark horror and lighthearted fairy tales, but mixing them both together really flourished in this flick. At first, I was a little jarred at how I mainly focused upon the one side of the narrative based in the war setting, but by the end of the film, when the other side of the fairy tale material came together, I fully understood what the movie was trying to say and made me value it even more. Del Toro's craft going into the visual work and production, specifically the costumes, is downright incredible and truly his own distinct style. Olufia may be a standard protagonist, but I really grew to love her as I can relate to her struggle, and this is a movie that I can distinctly love for being a fairy tale aimed at a more mature light. There will be blood. Wow. Just wow. What an incredible movie. You know your movie is damn well good when it ends, and I had to take a minute to process everything. The music knows exactly when it's called for leaving some scenes to truly focus on unfolding things without it and then coming in to hit the right chords in a moment. The late 19th century and early 20th century is truly replicated via the production and a lot of shots are hauntingly memorable. Daniel Day-Lewis is just downright incredible. The film would not work at all if it weren't for him, though not to discredit the rest of the cast as they are great too. And the overall story focused upon his character is a truly haunting examination of hatred. The Dark Knight I love Batman Begins, but for me personally, I love it as a superhero movie. The Dark Knight, however, is a great movie, if you see where I'm standing. The craft at play is elevated from the original in every way, 
The pacing is very much more exhilarating, but is clearly never rushed, and the score remains well handled. I love Heath Ledger as Joker, but the rest of the cast is also just as amazing, whether it be Christian Bale, Gary Oldman, or Aaron Eckhart. If Begins was about distinguishing Batman as a character, this one pulls a play on his moral compass and how it reflects society, which is what really has me coming back to this installment. The Hurt Locker For a good while while watching this, I wasn't really vibing with it, but out of nowhere, I started to, and this isn't me saying it's a bad movie, because it's not. It's not a perfect one, in my humble opinion. The characters have a lot of distinct traits and are greatly flourished through each thrill sequence, which to note, are all incredible and, even when it's not putting me on the edge of my seat, remain impactful, important, or just entertaining. The practical work that went into the bomb antics are greatly impressive and truly set the tone and stakes of the story via the opening sequence really having me off guard, which also applies to the rest of the story, having good writing, and how it focuses on every character's mindset and mission. The only problems I had were that scenes, though not choppy, went one after another without a focus upon setups, and the direction isn't bad, but I feel its theme wasn't fully replicated in the story. Inception Christopher Nolan is a filmmaker that is very high in my books from this experiment, and Inception's direction truly proved to me why I enjoy his craft. Every little thing about this movie is so well articulated, whether it be the different tones of music, from a sense of wonder and exposition, high instrumentation and action sequences, and the mind-bending visuals that truly are out of this world. The mix-up of practical and visual effects is greatly used to make every moment believable. The snappy transitions and quick pace are well done. Chris's style comes from making his films unique and providing a great story that has a lot of thought-provoking ideas, both in well-done confusion and proper information, leaving a lot of his film up to interpretation. The Social Network This one hurt, and I mean that in a good way. The very neutral lighting, heightened camera work, essential music, informative dialogue, and the pace amping up to events unfolding only to take a slow burn through the second half to really focus in on what's happening is all intelligent direction. That direction being the best way to tackle this real life success story with how rather than be biased and see things from the main individual's position, it goes deep into witnessing everything from the perspectives of every crucial person involved with the subject matter to really let this film be definitive. I think what makes this a standout is how relevant its themes are and how they can apply to anybody's story, making it a true piece of discussion. The Avengers The Marvel Universe will always hold a special place in my heart, and this film too, as this helped nurture my love for movies because I still remember seeing this in theaters as a young child, being amazed at what I was watching. I'm glad to say that it still holds up for me. It is superb on knowing exactly what we want, but without being dumb about it, giving us fun character interactions and exciting blockbuster action, all pulled off by the accurate dialogue, well-established heroes and villain, likable performances, iconic visuals, memorable score, and greatly handled production. A note is that I watched this film in a completely blind lens removing my knowledge of the rest of the MCU, and it still worked for me. Aside not knowing the full backgrounds of the heroes, I could still jump in and be in on the picture, which makes me love this film's simplicity even more. The Dark Knight Rises I know a lot of people don't like this movie, and that's totally fine as all opinions are subjective, but for me, I still loved it. It's the weakest of the trilogy, for sure, but aside from an unnecessary plot twist at the end, I didn't really have any other complaints. Rises really stands out to me for 
how it chooses to take a slower and thought out approach to the story, allowing an even more analytical lens to things. With Bruce Wayne's arc really coming full circle in this final installment, and the rest of the cast, both old and new, remaining charming. The film remains a large spectacle like the previous one, and is greatly done. The remaining aspects of the music and cinematography remain great, and overall, I think this is still a great conclusion to an otherwise great trilogy. 12 Years a Slave This movie was tough to watch for me, not because it was bad, no it's a masterpiece, but because of the true story it tackles and how it really had an impact on me. Like Schindler's List, this is another great example of how to utilize the medium of film to honorably showcase true events and really shine the spotlight on a noble individual and the hardships they've been through. In this case, Solomon Northup, whose story is important at looking upon the era of slavery. So much imagery in this movie will stick with me for how it chooses not to shy away at the brutality of this time in history. It is painful to watch, but I commend it for it. it really is necessary to understand the wrongfulness. I think what makes this stand out is how it showcases events from both sides of it, how the slaves are in such horrible and difficult positions, whilst the owners are insane and truly lack any empathy, which makes this more of such a necessary motion picture that needs to be watched at least once. Boyhood I am a sucker for coming of age flicks because they're the most significant part of our lives and this movie truly nurtures that into a motion picture. Story-wise, nothing really happens and oddly enough, it works wonderfully as it's just a very simple and surreal look at the passage of time through witnessing a young kid slowly grow up into an adult. The thing about this production that is its biggest draw is the fact that the director chose to film this movie over many years with the cast growing across the entire movie in real life and that just makes this not only unique but truly smart. The color grading going from a blue gray palette to a more optimistic and colorful overlay is very good attention to detail. The in-scene music, transition from year to year, not being spelled out, and the never unengaging duration really makes this my kind of movie. Avengers Age of Ultron Now I agree with the popular opinion that this film is by far the weakest Avengers installment, but I still had fun watching it. The way the film is put together feels unorganized. A lot of the ideas it presents are never fully tapped upon in terms of execution, and the tone is very inconsistent, as it never decides if it wants to be serious or lighthearted, fun. Everything else with this film, like the original, remained from the large production, charismatic characters and performances, both old and new, iconic shots, memorable score, and everything else left intact from Avengers 1 remained, which makes this another solid comic book blockbuster. Moonlight Moonlight hits different on its approach to coming of age, but I vibe with it so hard. The vibrant colors, raw scenery, and straightforward structure keep this film level-headed. I really vibe with how this movie tackles a lot of difficult subject matter from trauma, bullying, sexuality, substance abuse, and so much more in a very rough and impactful viewpoint from main protagonist, Chiron, who is so well layered and really gripped me into watching his evolution across the film, who every actor portraying him does a flawless job at being seamless. I also love how it presents a very difficult exterior, but deep down, it's a very sincere and heartfelt picture with a lot of well-built struggles to get there. La La Land Now this is the clear-cut definitive answer to the term cinema. This might just be my favorite movie out of the entire list. The enchanting cinematography, emotional music, distinct musical numbers, tight pacing, focused editing, unique style and appropriate tone, unforgettable dialogue, iconic characters and performances, timeless story, and flawless direction truly make this a movie that shows me why I love film, its importance, its love letter approach to passion, and everything I just said isn't enough to even describe this film. 
but I'll leave it here. Ladybird. We literally just had like three coming of age flicks like very close to each other, but I don't mind adding this banger to my favorites of the genre. Greta Gerwig's direction on positioning the audience into protagonist Lady Bird's shoes and view her world of Sacramento and her own unique viewpoints truly is distinct. And once things around her begin to unravel, I, alongside Lady Bird, both were unveiled to something together. The dialogue is so brutally honest at accurately depicting human interaction, whether it be from teenagers or adults, and every plot point presented across the film is a nice spin on teen archetypes. I really value this film for taking the standard template of the genre and really spinning it out into bold and creative directions, which makes this another favorite. Avengers Infinity War This movie should not work. The Russo brothers literally achieved the impossible, not by making this a good film, but an incredible watch, in my eyes at least. Nowhere is this movie by means like an Oscar worthy picture, but it's clearly just trying to be a comic book blockbuster and it does that in spades, like the previous, but unlike the other films, Infinity War goes above and beyond to do more on a creative level. The large cast brings a lot of variety and everyone serves their role to the story. The tone has a better blend of lighthearted character banter and serious tension towards its climactic sequences. The editing is more consistent by splitting the film up into three storylines. Not a minute is wasted, the production remains stellar and everything else remains intact. I really appreciate this movie because of how it managed to flawlessly pull off everything the other films set up with Thanos and I can easily watch this movie and never get bored of it. Roma The best movies are the ones who don't explain everything to you, rather judging your focus by seeming simple on a surface level, but to really expect you to delve deep and uncover its true meaning. Roma is one of those films. On a basic level, it seems like a progressive story of an ordinary situation with some somber moments, but when looked at from a deeper scope, you realize that every frame has something behind it. Whether it be the tracking shots, blocking, black and white palette, replicative production of 1970s Mexico, slow pace, and well-directed cast. I think this film works because two specific scenes in correlation towards the end really evoked emotion out of me, all because I knew I had to look deeper into this wonderful work of art. Avengers Endgame I'm going to say it again, this film should not work, and this time it doesn't, but that's totally okay. I'm going to claim this film is indeed a masterpiece, but for all the wrong reasons. Again, this is a comic book blockbuster, not an Oscar worthy movie, but I think this film explains perfectly what a perfect movie even is, when flawed. A lot of ideas set up across the series were a lot to manage and pull off in this finale, but for the most part, they still manage to do the best that can be achieved. Every character remains lovable, with now the hero is taking the spotlight away from the antagonist, and their conclusive arcs are satisfying. The production can feel flat, and the color grading lacks personality, but it still never fully took me out of the film, as it still had enough to back it up for me. I think this film, despite its flaws, works because there is no such thing as a perfect movie. A masterpiece comes from how good it is at either keeping its flaws to a minimum, or not detracting away from its other positivity, which makes this a film I can still enjoy as a finale because it is very difficult to do a good finale to a series and the fact that this is still good makes it high up for me. Parasite It's a masterpiece, simple as that. May I say more? Okay, to add my brief thoughts, everything about this film is like very intelligent and careful with how it approaches its material, with the story having a great directional shift by starting off as like a quirky comedy turned drastic drama that is played off greatly, added with its very in-depth thematic context that makes it more gathered. Every character and performer bounce off each other well, being total opposites of one another and having a very engaging dynamic, and the filmmaking going hand in hand with juxtaposing the very clean and bright visuals of one family 
to the creatively colorless and harrowing palette to the other. It's just a total banger. Portrait of a Lady on Fire Mesmerizing like any great art can be said to this movie as well, as this one truly is like a fever dream, but in a good way. I love the approach to the visuals by literally making every scene burst with color and emulate the art of a portrait. The absence of music helps aid the dialogue that is very thought-provoking. The dual characters are filled with such life and complexity. The editing really allows every scene to truly breathe and allow the film to play out everything. I just got enthralled in the beautiful and tragic romance that the film displayed, with the movie knowing what it wants to focus on and really allowing it to sync with me. Like damn, I love romance movies, but there always comes one that makes me question why I enjoy heartbreak. Dr. Sleep At last, we've arrived at our final feature presentation, and this one is a nice note to end on. And to get it out of the way and have a hot take, I think Dr. Sleep is on the same level as The Shining. This movie works simply because it pays a great amount of homage to the original classic while still shedding its own originality, whether it be the more grounded and mystical direction, greatly evolved character of Danny, who is excellently performed by Ewan McGregor, the creative sound design and music, streamlined pace, and overall, great legacy continuation to The Shining. As a film, this works as an example of modern cinema, for it takes what we've already come familiar with and witnessed with the medium to utilize what's been done to create something new, original, and can stand alongside the classics. Whew, we did it. Now you're probably thinking, damn, that was a lot of movies. Trust me, I know. Now that it's all over, what now? Well, like I stated, the whole goal was to try and understand my passion and understanding of the movie form by watching all these classics that you've gained my brief thoughts on, but, but did I really gain anything out of it? Will you gain anything out of watching these movies? Well, I can tell you one thing, and that is that I'll never watch movies the same way again. Beforehand, I was just a casual viewer who was just really entertained by it, but now, it's like I literally have a third eye watching movies. Unlike you, I see so much more texture within the films I select to watch. I see more beyond what's on the screen. I see the true meaning of it all. The meaning not just of movies, but of art and its emotion. It has always been about emotion. Notice how in every film I talked about that, I always talked about how it moved me or evoked emotion out of me. Even the films that are intended to be just dumb fun gain emotion by evoking joyful glee at what's on the display. And even for the films that I thought less of, still I enjoyed because I can tell there's so much passionate creativity as to what I was watching that I can tell the people making it cared about what they were doing. The films that I even downright disliked are the ones that I can tell were just not as well constructed. The beauty of movies is that you gain something out of it, and the only way that can be possible in achieving that is by being a real visual and audio display of someone's own story being splattered right onto your television their dreams being available for you to see for your own eyes. So I did gain something out of it. And it's just a reminder as to why I love movies. And the whole point of this video was for you to understand my passion and maybe, perhaps, make you want to discover your own. Not just for movies, but for any kind of passion. To always care about what you want to do and love doing it. So are we done here for today? Indeed we are, but I'm not going to stop striving for my passion. As this is just the debut of this channel, and my mission to expose to the internet all the best kinds of movies. Sure, we all know that these are great movies, but to make me stand out, my goal is to utilize my analytical skills that I gained out of this experiment to really dive deep into why these movies touch so many people and truly gain something out of it. That's the dream, and that's what I'm going to do, and maybe you'll want to join me along the way, but if you don't, I at least value the time I've had with you today and thank you for your duration. I hope I didn't waste your time. Before this video ends, I want to end this video with a bang with a dedication to all the films that helped me establish my love for this medium. Well, that will be all for today. I hope you enjoyed your feature presentation and as to all fellow people, I hope you have a good day.
So long, farewell, and goodbye.